Hello guys, finally a new vlog. It's been a while and today we want to talk about uh, our animals in our home. We have a pufferfish, a lovebird and two uh, jumping spiders recently. And I'm gonna tell you about what their uh, feeding is, how many times I feed them, how big their tank is, the sum, so on. And Barry doesn't like it. He shows his black mask on his face. That means he's not really comfortable because sometimes when new people come in or um, I have a towel in my hand or I move like my arms, he doesn't like it. So First I'm gonna show you the uh, sun. Uh, part and uh, the more technical stuff of the aquarium. Okay, for the lightning we went for um, three bars, three uh, GBL bars that we already had for uh, Brody's tank. Um, and what I like most about these is that if they fall in the water, we still survive it. So uh, that's basically the reason why I took them. Um, I don't like the uh, the part that we have three separate lights and because the aquarium is over two meters long uh, we couldn't really get a standard um, uh, yeah what's it call it the light bulb armature um, <laughs> yeah so basically something which is wide enough um, or long enough we don't uh, we could for the tank dimensions we pick the length of the wall here which is 215 centimeters and the width is 75 centimeters and the height is also 75. Um, the reason um, for the width is basically that we can um, still fit it through the door. And the height is based on the glass thickness of 12 millimeters. Uh, if you make it higher, you have to switch over to uh, wider glass. And yeah, that's just uh, one step. It's not really needed here. Also uh, noticeable is that our water level is um, like 10 centimeters lower than the top of the aquarium. I did this on purpose because if Barry swims from left to right, yeah, he creates a little bit of, um, what do you call it? Flute? Tsunamis. Tsunamis. Small <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. Small tomatoes. So, this is the sun. I, uh, I got some lightning here, so I can uh, <coughs> so I can see what is happening over here. The aquarium has a volume of uh, around 1,250 liters. The sun is around 300 liters, which is a total of 1,500. Um, I wanted to make the sun as big as possible, uh, but yeah, it didn't make any sense to make it over the full width. Uh, also, uh, because we needed this space to put some material, um, of so, yeah, some things for the fishes and all the electronics uh, are behind it. Um, yeah, we added this one later. This was not supposed to happen, but it just... Uh, it just happened two days ago. <laughs> yeah, it just happened two days ago. So it was not originally intended to put this aquarium here, but it's, uh, it's a great spot and... Um, yeah, like they share um, their uh, bubble uh, <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> they share the bubbles. The bubbles. So this first compartment is um, for the filtering. Um, I have some filter wool here, which I replace uh, two times a week. Um, we started off with one time, but two times is needed uh, because it's yeah, it's it's just fully brown in three days basically. This is also. Um, to put in some filter material but I also added some ceramic material. So here we have the uh, two thermostats. Uh, we picked two uh, just in case that if one breaks down we have a second one and also two heats faster than one. Um, we have this attached to a system that uses this sensor to measure the temperature and then by uh, a special device you can uh, set the temperature to a very um, uh, small deviation. So it just tells this thing to go on and off when it measures a temperature between 25 and 26 degrees Celsius. 
So it's a very constant temperature measurement and it's also an additional safety which you have um, so you prevent the thermostats from overheating. There's also the option uh, which is nice especially if it's very hot during summers to add a ventilation system to it so you can cool down the aquarium to the same temperature you have set in. The last compartment is for the pump. Um, this one, the only thing I would change uh, is the difference in height. I would make this one a little lower because now the only thing that makes us the small, slightest amount of um, noise is the waterfall here. This is the pump compartment. Uh, the pump is uh, 9,000 liter an hour. And uh, that's bigger than needed, but it's good to have a little overcapacity because buffers are messy. Messy eaters, huh, hey, Barry? Yeah, who's a messy eater? You are. <laughs> Where's the food, Dad? So the feeding part is my part. Um, I'm feeding uh, very uh, freshwater crayfish and I buy them alive at the wholesale. And then I put them in the freezer because they contain parasites and you don't want that. The second uh, I feed him is uh, sometimes occasionally clams for his teeth because the crayfish is not hard enough for this. I just bought uh, Canadian night crawlers. They are really big worms, the biggest earthworms you can find. And he loves them. I am breeding currently uh, cockroaches for Brody and for Barry, but Barry doesn't like them yet. So I have to wait till the babies are grown up and make more babies before I can feed them because they have uh, quite a short lifespan. I'm also breeding uh, currently uh, African land snails. I know some people have them as a pet. I have them as a pet part food. The ones we got now, we don't give because they are odd adults. I've got four of them. They still don't have babies, so I'm waiting till they have some snail loving. And snails are really an important part of their diet. So, we're waiting for this. Um, about feeding, some people feed their puffers maybe three times a day, every day, doesn't matter. But what I do, I do every other day one meal because um, sometimes when the day after he needs to poop everything out and sometimes he didn't poop enough. So I want to see the whole meal he had come back in poop. So this is why I feed every other day because I don't want him getting clogged. The thing I learned from keeping puffer fish is I started with feeding seafood like shrimps, clams, all that uh, mussels and everybody is telling you you can feed them clams, you can feed them mussels and shrimp, it's all okay. But the, the dangerous part is about this type of food. I didn't know. I learned it from uh, puffer fish enthusiast. I am part of this group and this group is full of the right information. I am Dutch and for me it's hard to understand this part in English. I know what it does, but I can't explain it. So I'm gonna read you a part from what I learned from Thiamin Nix. So what is thiamin? Thiamin, also known as thiamine or vitamin B1, is an essential nutrition for most animals, including fish. Thiamin is required for the body to function properly because it's an essential component of energy metabolism and it plays a key role in nerve, muscle and internal organ function. It cannot be made by the body and must be attained in the diet. So what is thiaminase? Thiaminases are enzymes which can be found in many foods. Uh, they render the thiamine biolor... 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 Who schrijf je biologisch in Engels? Biological. Thiaminase... <laughs> Render thiamine biologically. Ik ga het niet zeggen, oké. Okay. Um, what they do, the enzymes, once the thiamine molecule has been cleaved by the thiaminase, the body is not capable of restoring it. The symptoms of sickness is just poor growth, they won't eat anymore, the immune system fails and they can die in the end. And I saw many problems of pufferfish, they have these symptoms and they were only fed seafood, so yeah, it's not scientifically proven, but I know that Barry feels so much better since I just skipped the seafood. 
So if you have a freshwater puffer, please don't feed them seafood. It's bad for them. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video, under the video, about tiaminase. Really, <laughs> it's so hard for me to say it. An important thing, um, if you want to keep a fish like this, is that you have to keep in mind that, that was his poop face, by the way. You have to keep in mind that his waste is enormous. It's smelly when it gets above the water surface. That's his poop face again. And you have to clean after him like every day. It's really important because, especially if you have a, a family a tank, <laughs> or a fish family, tank. a community tank, uh, other fishes will frack. Well, they basically will tear up. That was his poop face again. They will tear up his uh, waist. And yeah, you will not be able to find it back. It, the aquarium is big, so it will be gone. And another option could be to have nothing in the tank, but that is something you will not want for this buffer because look at him, he's scared easily. And he wants to have nice surroundings, plants, stones and friends um, also the ambu, the ambu puffer is a great fish for in community tanks but every puffer is not the same puffer so you can have an ambu who eats the fish barry is really a gentle giant he's really yeah we also uh, we also call him ambu because he's uh, afraid of everything mm -hmm. <laughs> Barry is just, when he sees a crayfish, he is the, the predator and the, the all-holy, uh, I don't know, but every little thing scares him. Like, what is this? this dolphin is, ne is never scared. You see him about the videos on my Instagram, he's always in the mouth of Barry. Paul, Mr. Dolphin. After we had Barry, I really wanted a potato puffer. But it was Corona, still is Corona, and the import uh, was laying still, so no potato puffer for me. So I waited and I waited, and then finally he came at my local fish shop, Brody. The potato puffer, uh, his original name is uh, Tetraodon Mirius puffer. They are uh, ambush predators, that means that they wallow in the sand waiting for their prey. Brody, his tank is about 140 liters. It's uh, 80 by 35 by 50 centimeters. So it's big enough. I like to have my puffers more space than usual. And I really love Brody for his attitude. And he's exactly what I wanted. Um, their diet contains um, primori primarily, who said that I have? Primarily, their diet contains uh, primarily fish. He's a piscivore, that means that they are, they, are, blah, 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 they are a fish eater. They also eat insects. I feed him uh, crickets, uh, locusts, and I have uh, cockroaches. I'm breeding them currently. Uh, I feed uh, Brody also freshwater fish. It's uh, a uh, Victorian bash. He doesn't really like it because he wants live fish, but live fish contains parasites, so I want to take the risk. I did it once or twice, but better be not. Uh, I also feed uh, Brody uh, earthworms, night crawlers. He just loves them like spaghetti. Uh, we use for Brody's tank uh, an Eheim canister filter, uh, Eheim 2424. It's uh, for um, 120 liter to 250 liters, and yeah, I like some, but this is for me. The for Brody is good enough. If I uh, could choose uh, to change the filter, if I had the space for the filter, I would go for a sump because the sump is much easier to clean, and yeah, and you can fit a bit a bigger pump. Gonna need a big. Pump. Gonna need a bigger pump. So now we go to the last tank of them all, the pea puffers. 
V-Buff tank is our latest addition to the collection of tanks. And uh, this one is uh, designed by myself and made by the aquarium store we always uh, go to Aquarium Kuna in Best. And I designed this one myself because I just like my aquariums to fit in my home. So the tank dimensions are uh, 60 by 60 uh, with a height of 45 centimeters. And this equals 160 liters of water. It is, um, yeah, it's big enough to fit 16 of these uh, beautiful small puffers. But um, yeah, you can't get enough of these uh, boys. Okay, boys. Uh, for the filtering, we have two things. We have the bottom uh, suction side, which is in the middle. Um, water goes through and will end up above the filtration. And also we have the surface skimmer, um, basically the waterfall going down. So we have two types of uh, um, yeah, water filtering, uh, no, that water suction. Um, <clears throat> then it will go through the different compartments. First compartment is specially created for the heater. Second compartment is with the ceramic material. And then the third compartment is for the pump. Uh, and you need some buffer here, so I made it a little bigger with the space I had. I'm using this uh, Jacob pump, which is uh, 1200 liters an hour. And that's a lot of flow. Um, and these little guys don't like the flow, so I uh, made a system of which they do not um, are not bothered by the high flow as much. It's um, yeah yeah this pump is big for only 160 liters of water. Uh, 1200 liters an hour is is just it's big capacity pump, and that is nice. Also, um, yeah, I can fit everything in this compartment. Pea puffers are so interested in puffer dead and barry also. Uh, the pea puffers are the smallest uh, species of puffer fish. So the pea puffers uh, come in groups. They need to be with minimum six of them because uh, they uh, feel uh, more secure together. They need a heavily planted tank. I want to add more. so. Because they are scared easily and they need hideouts. Um, with feeding, I feed them every day because they are with a group, so I don't want. Um, how do you say that? Who said that? Should not fight each other. Mm. Attack. Because I don't want them to attack each other or anything. And these are still babies, really tiny babies, and they can grow till two and a half centimeters. I wanted to add some more because I have 12 now. Um, uh, what, they, what I'm feeding them are uh, mice, uh, bloodworms, uh, white mosquito larvae, um, uh, brine shrimp, and tiny uh, crickets. You can feed them all kinds of insects if they are really small, and um, birdworms. They love it. I don't have uh, small enough earthworms for them, but yeah. What's the name? Loving it. I'm loving it. Wil je wat enthousiast gaan doen? Ja. Ik woon te doen. Hallo. Hallo, girl. Okay, nog On een your knees. Ja. Yeah. This is really cool because we have here the biggest freshwater puffer species there is, Barry the Embu puffer, and here we have the smallest species of puffer fish, the pea puffers. So that's a nice combination. So, yeah, when they have such attitude, they are really small, but so fun to have and easy to care for. Yeah, look at them. Oh, you are so tiny. I want to hug you and squeeze you and oh, you are so hungry. Oh, hey! oh baby puppy. Mm, I just want to hold him, squeeze him and I can't. I can't. Nee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you don't like spiders, don't continue watching, be warned, they are really vicious, tiny, the cutest spiders you have ever seen. 
glow. So um, finally, I finally got my spirals. Alita is over there. She's so tiny. Maybe I can. There's Alita. These are Philippus uh, Regius Everglades. They're a six inch star, which means that they're molded six times. Um, they are probably have needed one, or they, they need one mold, or maybe two molds uh, to become adults. And from adult on, they are able to reproduce. So we have a male and a female. Alita is a female and Boris is the male. Their um, the typical difference between the two is that the male is always black and the female can uh, vary between some lightish gray uh, to black, which is uh, very rare. And they typically have the orange color that is uh, loved by the males. The, the orange color uh, on the females makes them more attractive to males. There's Alita, the female. She's so tiny. Alita, Alita, Alita. Current homes um, of spiders are 20 by 20 by 30 centimeters, uh, which is enough for them to become um, full grown adults so they can uh, live in this basically until they die and that's uh, that's between one or two years that's their lifespan these houses are a little too big for their current size but I think after a mold they uh, they fit right in it's also um, after their last mold it uh, goes better I uh, I don't know anything. Uh, what you so forth? Early wing flies. Feed my girlfriend curly wing fries. <laughs> and um, yeah, we want to feed them uh, cockroaches, but we never tried it yet. Uh, also, we give them mealworms, uh, crickets. We've got a lot of crickets for them. But we never fed them to it, we did not feed the crickets yet. Uh, it's because the um, crickets can be harmful if you leave them unattended with spiders. And we want to feed them, but we want the spider to come out of his home first. So we can just put them in a, yeah, in a safe direction where we can keep our eyes on the crickets. How tiny she is. So tiny. Oh, there's a fly, she don't see it. She has the fly. I'm so proud of her. So proud. How proud am all my children. Nom 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 nom. Uh, the last but not least is uh, Nimbus, the lovebird. He has a blue muta mutation. Um, I got him as a baby. He was four weeks old and I uh, needed to hand fed him. And I know uh, lovebirds go in uh, flocks. I had two of them. I didn't leave them unattended because they were not always nice to each other. And one died, unfortunately, because uh, she had this egg stuck in her. Uh, you know what I mean. And Nimbus is 10 years old since December. He is born in December. And he's my uh, sweet little boy. Huh? Yeah. Does he bite? Yeah. Not me, but Puffer Dad, he does. He doesn't like Puffer Dad, eh? Yeah. Hmm? Telefoon. Die camera, hè? Je weet dat hij daar gewoon uh, beschadigingen brengt, hè?